that Sabrina can add to this. Number one, I think it's 100% about walking the walk. So I think what's basically wrong a lot about leadership is people talk, but they don't hold themselves accountable to be doing the same things as everyone else. You know, and basic leadership comes to, like, if I'm willing to pull a card up and say something vulnerable, trust me, everybody's willing to, they want to see that, right? They want to see, like, is, is Amy or is Sabrina going to pull a card? So what this is is a bunch of cards that are emotions. We, we also do do this over happy hour, so maybe that's part of the uh, trick. <laughs> um, but, you know, they pick three cards, and they're allowed to put discard one and pick another one, and they're all face down. And the whole theory of this thing is why do the cards pick you? You could play it so the cards are up, but I kind of feel like that's, you know, you know, that's kind of a, you know, that, that's a it. thing. Yeah, that, that's, that, that's not real. And the whole thought, it, it's just amazing, this game. Honestly, people will pick these cards and they'll be like, oh, my God, you know, and it'll be something like, you know, regret or you know, appreciation or gratitude or motivation. And they'll be like, I have been struggling with this for the last couple of months. And they'll open up about something personally, which will just make the team feel more capable of saying hard things and building real relationships, right? Like I learned something early in my career when I was an investment banker. When I realized that I'd no sooner go out to dinner with the people that I was working with than work with them, it was sort of like life is too short. All you have is time. If you don't use your time well, you can't get it back. And so to me, and I think to Sabrina, I want people to come to work who are logging these hours, not because it's a job, but it's part of a journey of their own growth in life. And I think the cards are just one of those things. If we're willing to get vulnerable um, and they're willing to see people that they never thought would talk about those things, um, then, then it becomes real for them. They look forward to it now. You know, they're like, hey, we haven't played the cards in a while. Let's put them out. They always love the new, new people to have to pull the cards first. <laughs> I think it's like a hazing. You know, it's our version of an emotional hazing. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but it's, it's pretty effective. Do you, yeah. you want to? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, too, that it, it is part of this, um, what I would call blurring, blurring the line more between, you know, what used to be a very, like, there's your work life and there's your personal life. Um, and this is something kind of in the middle, um, and more and more, I think that that's come up is is a reality for people that it's a much blurrier state now, um, and I feel that's a much more productive place to be. It creates stronger teams, teams that will um, do anything uh, to uh, achieve the goals of the company. Um, when you create personal relationships with people as opposed to just working relationships with them, um, invariably something really awful is going to happen along the journey. Um, and, you know, it's a little bit like going into battle, especially in a startup. And you want to feel like those people have your back. That, um, and, and taking down some of those um, personal barriers um, allows you to do that, and um, and and you just know people in a fuller way, which I think um, is really awesome. And I, you know, it's you have well, Amy's absolutely right that you have to model it. You have to be willing to do that yourself. Um, and we do it with the cards, and we do it in our one on ones with our, uh, you know, with our teams. Um, and you know, we we all know a lot about each other, um, which is funny and um, awesome. Um, and sometimes painful and hard, and we help people through stuff in addition to hitting other goals um, and you know getting the business initiatives done that we need to do. I, I just add one thing. Um, having said all this, this doesn't mean that this is the only way companies can succeed. It's the path we've chosen. So I'm always extremely um, forthright in saying some companies have a culture where this would just be absurd. And those are successful companies, right? There isn't a right way to do this or a wrong way. It's an authentic way. And so I think when you can find authentic leadership that resonates, what happens then is that you become much more, um, you have a much higher success rate of recruiting people that actually desire this culture, right? So one of the things that we do Right. One of the big problems in companies that don't succeed is 
if they haven't defined what their culture is. Their culture could be cutthroat. I don't, it's, I don't judge, right? Their culture could be like, if you're late on a deliverable, I don't care what your personal problems are, you're gone, right? That may work for some companies if they recruited the right kinds of people that see that as motivating, right? In our company, one of the things we do is when we interview somebody, we give them our values and our vision and mission statement. And we go, we say to them at the end of the interview, go get a cup of coffee, you know, and in San Francisco, we give them like $7 because a cup of coffee is $7. <laughs> um, but, you know, we say, go do this. If you'd like to come back because this, this speaks to you, please do. If not, feel free to keep it and keep the coffee. <laughs> and I've had people that have come back in tears because it moved them. I've had people that have come back being like, I don't understand what this word love means in your values. What does love have to do with the workplace? And then I say, here's another $7. Go get a cup another of coffee. Cup of coffee. Please don't come back um, in a nice way. Um, but my point is that it is it is the, you know, there there is no right parenting. There is no right relationship. There's no, it's what you choose. And I think the word that I would select is what is authentically real to leadership that's effective is authentically real to the people that you actually gra that gravitate towards your organization and that you can motivate. Groups of people motivated do extraordinary things. Mm -hmm. They just do. It's it's unbelievable what people here have done in a short period of time. I mean, we started this company, you know, 15 months ago. You know, the products out shipped. You know, we're scaling. You know, we have some things that we haven't done so well. Some things we've actually you know killed it on. But, you know, it's extraordinary, right? And yet the other side of it is it could be as extraordinary if leadership had a different style that authentically, you know, recruited people that followed that leadership style. And I guess the thing that I have to say is, like, I'm in a place in my life where I don't – I'm not going to run a company that doesn't, you know, believe in these values, it, you know. And so it's a non-starter for me and I think a non-starter for Sabrina. And, you know, it's just a choice that people make. <laughs>